So now we need to define dependent events. And this is when the occurrence of one event does affect the probability of another. So it will often occur when you have an event without replacement. And so here's an example, B. What is the probability of picking blue, a blue crayon from a pack of four, and then before you put it back, you pick a yellow crayon? So you didn't see the words without replacement, but because it says, and then you before you put it back, that is the same thing as saying without replacement. In this case, there are less crayons available for the second pick. So we won't be able to, you know, have a denominator of four. There won't be four crayons to choose from. So now let's go ahead and look at the items below and decide whether they're dependent or independent. So on A, you earn an A on an exam and you studied for that exam. Would these two items be independent of each other or dependent upon each other? Okay, we're going to answer this as dependent because studying can and should affect your grade. You may study and not get an A, but usually, you know, getting an A is because you studied. And keep in mind, it doesn't work backwards. Just because you get an A doesn't make you suddenly study, but studying should have an effect on getting an A. Question two. You have a flat tire and you are late to work. Would these two items be dependent upon each other or independent of each other? We consider them dependent because having a flat tire could make you late. I mean, maybe you leave enough time for work that you can have a flat tire fix it and still get there on time. And again, it doesn't work backwards. Just because you're late for work doesn't make you get a flat tire. It might feel like that if you have bad luck, but in this case, it was the first thing did have an effect on the second thing. And lastly, question C. If you earn more than $50,000 per year and you're born in the month of July, are these two items dependent upon each other or independent of each other? They're independent. Your birth month has no effect on your salary and your salary can't change your birth month. So one does not influence the other. So now let's look at the multiplication rule with dependent events. A few minutes ago, we did a problem where you picked one oatmeal cookie and then put it back and reached for a second cookie to see if it was oatmeal. That first oatmeal cookie, there are originally five oatmeals in a jar of 30, and since the second one was done with replacement, we just multiplied five over 30 squared to get our answer. But if we don't put that first oatmeal cookie back, then when you reach for that second oatmeal cookie, there's only gonna be four cookies left because one of the oatmeals is missing, and there's only gonna be 29 total cookies still in the jar because that first cookie didn't make it back in the jar. So this is how we would find the probability. The probability of the first being oatmeal, not putting it back, and then the second being oatmeal, would be first oatmeal, still five out of 30 because the jar has been untouched. But that second cookie being oatmeal, we just said was now four over 29. We can still multiply the fractions. We just had to adjust our second fraction. So we'd still multiply straight across to get 20 over 870. But what happened with that second fraction is that there was one less oatmeal cookie, so we were down to four oatmeals. And there was one less total cookie in the jar, so we were down to 29 total cookies. And that's how we get our 2.3%. So the formal definition for multiplication rule with dependent events is the probability of A and B is the probability of A times, well, I can't say B because B has been affected by A. So we have the way of writing it is read the probability of B given A. That straight line is read given. The probability of B given A is the conditional probability of B happening given A has already happened. So this is where we talked about 
the effect of one, or one event does have an effect on another. So A missing has an effect on B. And even though that formula is kind of weird looking, and then there's a whole formula just for solving that part of it, don't worry. Because what we're gonna do is we're just going to adjust our second fraction, just like we did with the four over 29 above. 